Hello, I'm Rebecca Lewington. Welcome to our podcast. Micron recently announced the world's first one alpha node DRAM process technology, which greatly improves bit density, power, and performance. Our one alpha low power DRAM for mobile phones, for example, uses an impressive 20% less power than its predecessor. My guest, Hisashi Hisamatsu, spends his life running experiments on smartphones to understand exactly how different applications access memory. So he's the perfect person to help me understand how the benefits of One Alpha translate to longer battery life in the real world. Hisamatsu-san, thanks very much for joining me. Thank you for having me today, Rebecca. You're very welcome. So first, tell us something about yourself. What's your background and what's your current role? Uh, uh, so my background is that I've been in the thir- uh, semiconductor industry for about 30 years. I uh, started off as in marketing, but about 10 years ago, I joined Micron as a smartphone application engineer. Excellent. So how does power analysis work? What's the process for you? Uh, so typically, uh, we get phones directly from our customers uh, to take measurements. But sometimes in the event that we can't get those phones, uh, we actually go out to the market and buy them and then um, uh, tear them down you know, so that we can actually take the measurements. Right. Um, so how closely do you work with customer, customer engineering teams? Uh, so we have uh, two different uh, teams on our side, one that takes the measurements and then a different team that does the analysis of the data. And how we collaborate with the customers is that uh, we get their phones uh, early before they go out into the market. Uh, and you know we do uh, the analysis for them. And this typically happens uh, anywhere from, you know, we get... Uh, a phone every one, one, somewhere in between one to three months. So that's great because you, you almost become an extended part of the customer's engineering team. Would that be right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you're, you're right. Um, you know, we, we, um, we collaborate very closely with uh, a lot of our customers like that. Super. Now, um, the process of doing power analysis, I gather, is quite complicated. It's not just you pick up the phone and swipe down and see how much power it's using. Can you tell me a bit more about the process? Hi. Yeah. So typically, when we get a phone from our customers, what we do is we actually take the phone apart, uh, expose the memory portion, and actually replace it, uh, or I should say, put a socket underneath it and then put the memory back so that uh, it's much easier to take the measurements. Uh, and then what we do is we actually turn the phone on. So, uh, you know, without, so we have to do all the teardown without breaking the phone. Uh, and then we turn the phone on and then we take these measurements while actually running certain uh, features and applications within the phone, such as a camera or a game. Right, that's, uh, that, sounds quite, that sounds quite a job. But um, so let's talk a little bit about one alpha memory. Where does the 20% less power come from? Uh, so first off, uh, the process, um, you know, the new process plays a big part of the uh, power improvements on the device. Uh, and we, you know, I think that the process engineers did a great job to you know, bring this new technology um, to production. Uh, in addition to that, we also had our designers optimize the design uh, to minimize the refresh uh, that is necessary on the DRAM. Okay, so it's a, it's a combination of a shrink and some and some uh, and some uh, circ- circuitry cleverness. That's really interesting. So improvements in DRAM performance normally comes when we change generations. So from LPDDR4 to LPDDR5, for example. Is it unusual to get this kind of power saving from just a change of node? Uh, so yes, you know it, it is. An, uh, you know this one alpha uh, part ha- is actually a, um, has a much larger power improvement than a typical uh, node generation improvement. It must be very exciting to our customers. Um, so let's talk a bit about 
what that actually means in the real world. What impact does 20% lower power use from the memory have on the battery life for the phone as a whole? Yeah, so, um, you know, the memory uh, it consumes about 10% of the total power in a phone. Uh, so, you know, 20% uh, lower power on memory means a 2% power reduction in the overall phone. Now, you know, from a percentage perspective, it doesn't sound like much. Uh, but if you take a phone, for example, that has a battery life of roughly three days, that actually equates to a whole hour uh, that a user can use their phone for, you know, longer. So actually, it, it is a big deal. Okay. Yeah, and I, I gather that actually for many users, many customers, battery life is the number one most important thing when they look at a phone. So that really matters, doesn't it? Yes, so, you know, um, battery life is very important. And in fact, many of our customers uh, put a emphasis uh, on making sure that the, um, the battery life uh, is good. In fact, uh, a few years ago, we, we actually had a uh, problem where, um, you know, a 30 minute difference uh, right, in, in battery life became a really big issue at one of our customers. Uh, so that tells you how important that is. Interesting. Interesting. Now, which applications see the biggest benefit from more power efficient memory? I gather it's not the same for every kind of application. It um, so video uh, and gaming or really any type of um, activity that has a high stress on the system uh, has the biggest benefit uh, from the low power. And actually, you know, we're seeing that, you know, smartphone users nowadays uh, are increasing their use in this area, right? such as um, watching videos on YouTube. Um, you know, or on Facebook, uh, playing games, and actually even using your camera um, is a large uh, stress factor for the system. Right. The days of cameras being a simple thing, that you press the button and it takes a picture of long gone. There's a lot going on all the time with this application, so that makes perfect sense. Um, so we've just started shipping specifically LP DDR4X, but do we expect these power savings to extend to other Things in the pro in the DRAM product line. Yes, so we do uh, you know plan to have these power savings extend beyond LP four uh, X. You know, as you know, LP four X is aimed mainly at the mid range uh, and high you know high end phones, uh, but LP five, um, which is for flagship phones, uh, will also. Um, have these power saving benefits. Okay. And uh, do you, are there applications for this that can benefit beyond mobile phones? So phones are not the only thing um, that have started using uh, low power DRAM. Uh, and so, you know, we will, we expect to see, uh, yeah, uh, power savings uh, on applications such as automotive uh, and PCs as well. Got it. Anywhere, anywhere power matters, this is important. I get it. Yes. So just to finish off, what do you think will be the next big thing in smartphones? So this is it. Yeah, so, um, you know, phones are continuing to add a lot more high performance features. Uh, and so, you know, I expect you know, the, uh, for example, the camera quality to continue to increase, uh, and then the processor speed to continue to increase as well to, you know, process more data. Uh, also, you know, with the uh, 5G networks coming in more and more, uh, the amount of data will also increase, you know, uh, leading to a need for, you know, higher memory speeds. And so, you know, LPDDR5 is currently, uh, you know, the highest speed at 6.4 gigabits per second, uh, but we expect more to come in the future. Right. So when that happens, I'm sure you'll be taking the phone apart and measuring exactly how that new stuff 
platform. So we'll have to check back in with you in some in the future to see how to see what's going on there. So Hisamatsu san thank you very much for joining me. This has been absolutely fascinating. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. Thank you.